Can you hear me out there? Can you hear me out there? If you can hear me, repeat after me. Today. Today is. Today is the best. Today is the best day of my life. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow may never be. Today is the best day of my life. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, boys and girls. Someone once said it is easier to build up a boy than it is to repair a man. And I think that statement is so true. So I, first of all, I want to thank all the scoutmasters, all the leaders, all the parents, and all the volunteers for all the work you are doing to develop these young boys into mature men. I'd like to thank the friends of the Gerald Ford Museum for hosting yet another September 11th Remembrance event to honor and remember our fallen heroes. Thank you military personnel for your ongoing duty to serve God and country and giving us the freedom that millions of people around the world desperately seek in their lives. Thank you first responders and public servants for your ongoing care and concern for the safety and well-being of the citizens of the greater Grand Rapids area. And thank you to all the committee organizers for allowing me the honor and the privilege to share my experience, my brief experience, at Ground Zero. First of all, you need to know that I was one of over 100,000 Salvation Army relief workers and volunteers who served during the 9-11 response. I want you to also know that out of the five million meals the Salvation Army served during the 9-11 response, I did not prepare or serve a single one. Please also know that I did not provide one minute of case management to over the 120,000 mental health and social service cases that the Salvation Army managed during the entire relief effort. I had little to, little to no interaction with family members of victims or even with first responders. My day-to-day -day interaction was with construction workers. My official assignment in New York was chaplain at a hydration station. Each and every day I simply handed out beverages and energy snacks to those employed to clean up the aftermath that took place on 9-11. Now I don't remember the exact intersection of the hydration station, but I do recall that it faced the apartment that Wesley Snipes had lived in, and directly behind the hydration station laid ground zero. I started each morning with a walk behind our little shack and a prayer for the firemen and police officers who are still raking through debris in search of evidence of their fallen comrades. Words cannot express the chill that went up and down my spine whenever I saw one of them bend over to extract something out of the dust to examine. Those were very painful, painful experiences. However, my daily exercise helped me to keep everything I was assigned to do in proper perspective, and that was to care for the physical and emotional needs of the cleanup crew. I developed a relationship with one guy named Michael. He was a big, burly, gregarious Italian man with an infectious smile. Every morning he would pull up in front of the hydration shack in his gigantic yellow earth mover and hop out of it as if it was a golf cart. He would come into the shack and load up with beverages and snacks that would sustain him for the entire day. And then at the end of his shift, he would always stop by and say goodbye to, to all of us who were working there, which I found quite strange and peculiar. Michael told me that he had been working on site every single day since the planes crashed into the towers. To put that into perspective, my friends, I wasn't deployed to ground zero until April 7th, seven months after the terrorist attack. On one particular Friday night, Michael stopped by the hydration station to let us know that he, he had finally gotten a weekend off and that he wouldn't see us again until Monday morning. His plan was simply to go for a motorcycle ride, spend the whole weekend on his bike. 
Well, when I reported and checked in for work on Monday morning, I found a newspaper article with Michael's picture nailed to the front door of our hydration station. The report said that he had been killed in a motorcycle accident over the weekend. His front tire had hit a small patch of pebbles in the middle of the road, which caused him to lose control of his bike and smash into a tree, ending his life. Out of the four and a half million persons served by the Salvation Army during the 9-11 relief effort, I remember Michael's life the most. Why? Because his unexpected death reminded me that life is short, that life is precious, and that life is meant to be lived to the fullest, one day at a time. Today is the best day of your life. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow may never be. Today is the best day of your life. Please don't forget what happened to our country 11 years ago. Please don't forget to recognize and honor our fallen heroes. And please don't forget to encourage and support our living heroes who serve us every single day of the year. May God bless the United States of America, and may he bless you too. Thank you for listening.